Okay, once again, I want to greet each and everyone in the name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Okay, we are studying about desiring God. Turn your Bible to Ephesians uh, chapter 5, verse 15 onwards. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 onwards. Look carefully then, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time. Because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And verse 18 is very important. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is departure, but be filled with the Spirit. So, Bible tells us, you know, you should not be unwise should be wise and you should be understanding what is the will of the lord is for your life paul goes on to tell you know you don't need to be a drunkard you know you don't need to be a drunkard you know who drank so much of wine and fully intoxicated by the wine okay but you should be drunk in the spirit you know you should be drinking the holy spirit that's what Paul is saying. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. As you are intoxicated by the wine, in the same way you should be intoxicated with the love of God, intoxicated by His Spirit. That's what uh, uh, Paul is trying to tell us. He's comparing with, you know, uh, intoxicated with wine. This we should be filled with the Spirit. So here I want to make some points here. And I don't know, people may get offended with me for saying this. Uh, but anyway, I want to tell you that, you know, I'm not a person like, you know, against somebody having a glass of wine or something like that. I'm not against that because I understand, you know, I have taken a time to study more than 75 scriptures in the Bible, what Bible talks about drinking and drunkenness and all those things. And I found out, you know, what Bible tells us, it talks about, you know, being drunk. Uh, it talks about, you know, not to be a drunk. So, one of the important thing which people fail to make is it is not about the whiskey, brandy, beer or wine or whatever. That is not the issue. The issue is self-control. One of the fruit of the spirit is self-control. So people are not talking about that. So instead of talking about that, they say that, you know, totally don't do this, don't do that. And So uh, I'm talking about, you know, there are times people are like very hypocrites. You know, we say we should avoid a few things, and uh, but we do uh, we do other things. Okay, the same Bible which talks about you know don't become a drunkard, the same Bible talks about you know don't become a glutton, gluttony also. But you know, people never stop eating; they eat nicely. In fact, the Christians are the one who eat too much. You see in Facebook, Instagram, Christians are always posting, and especially people, you know, pastors, you know, always posting photos with the restaurant. Whereas this Bollywood and other people posting photos and videos in the gym, working and training, and these people always, you know, you know, posting with some chicken peas and some pizzas. They're always eating, and they'll tell you know, okay, just praise God and eat, brother, eat nicely, eat nicely, eat nicely. And we fight and argue for food matters. So if you, are, if you are really concerned about this, I want to tell you, you have to exercise self-control in everything. In alcohol, in food matters. You know, people are eating too much of ice cream. People are eating too much of sweets. They were addicted to sweets. And that will, that will create more problems. Today, the greatest killer in this world is diabetes, uh, cancer, and heart attack. And all these things, you know, because of the lifestyle disease, they call it as a lifestyle because of eating too much. Eating too much of carbs, eating too much of sugar. So if I eat, you know, five chocolates, nobody will feel bad about it. But you know what? The five chocolate is going to, you know, affect my body, affect my health. So I want you to exercise self-control in everything. I'm not telling you go and drink, you know, much ever you want. I'm not saying that. If you are, if you are, you know, concerned about drinking, the same way you should be concerned about the food also. Uh, avoid eating sweets and avoid eating too much of food. Exercise self-control in everything. So let's uh, continue. So here Paul is telling us that you know, do not be drunk with much wine. 
but being filled with the spirit you know desiring god we are studying about desiring god we, we are not hungry for god we are not desiring god because you know we are drinking so much in this world we are eating in the table of this world and we are so trying to you know be filled with this world so we are not hungry for god we there is no true desire for god so you you must have have to have some clear understanding about this you see if you read uh, uh, matthew chapter 6 bible tells us you cannot serve two masters you cannot serve god and mammon so i want to explain this listen carefully and all we need is an understanding and wisdom from god money is not, not evil thing to you you can use your money to bless some poor you can use my till you can use the money to pay somebody's fees if you need to do lot of work so when bible tells us you cannot serve it is not only about the money it is about the world system if you are if you are you know trying to be filled with this world if you are trying to be filled with this world system if you are just enjoying this worldly system if god is your if god is your master you know you should your, your whole focus should be upon him your heart should be focused upon him you can desire him so is it wrong for us to have money is it wrong for us to have satisfied with the things and uh, you are not hungry for the lord there is something wrong with us see last time i told you again i will tell you if things if uh, things uh, satisfy us why we are keep on going on buying more things okay we are studying about uh, uh, matthew chapter 6 not serve two masters you cannot serve god and uh, mammon mammon is a word a ramic word which means worldly things it's not only about the money it's about not only about the worldly things it is about the system of the world okay so if you are filled with this worldly things if you are filled with the system of this world you will not be hungry for god i want to tell you if you have to really to be hungry for god you should be seeking him you should be desiring him the reason we don't have much hunger because we are so happy with these worldly things we try to satisfy ourselves with the worldly things but i want to tell you and in your experience you will know it in my experience i know it uh, things can only temporarily Uh, make us happy temporarily satisfy us when we buy a new car we are so excited so happy about it but in a within a one year you know we are not that much interested before i was always with a laptop wherever i am going i am going with my laptop and you know what after two years you know it has become nothing so i want to tell you the things you know we are trying to satisfy ourselves with things but i want to tell you things things will never satisfy us that is why we are trying to buy again and again and again if what we have already satisfy us why there is a need for us to buy more things we buy and accumulate more things just to just because of our ego i want to tell you my god one day i want to preach and teach about ego ego itself it's a some a complete a different subject you know it's all because of ego see having things is not a problem once again i want to tell you if you have a right heart and right thinking right ma- mindset you can enjoy because bible tells us god is not against enjoyment god is not against comfort god is not against luxury god wants us to give us all things but you know your your focus your affection should not be upon the things your focus your affection should be upon the lord we should use things we should love people but you know we use people and love things we should use things and love god saint augustine said you know in this way love god and do whatever you want you know if you if you really love god you can enjoy all those things in this world so having things is not the problem but having your heart upon those things and trying to fill yourself with buying more things and more things i want to tell you your success will never satisfy you 
re reaching the top your success will never satisfy you and we thought that you know success will satisfy success will not satisfy you things will not satisfy you you may win you may win this olympics and you know for some time you will be excited about it after some time you know if you are not going to win one more you are not going to be that much happy but you know god can bring satisfaction to you you can be filled you can be satisfied god wants us to be filled with the spirit intoxicated by his spirit god wants us to you know lose ourselves you know lost in his love in the book of song of solomon solomon is telling that you know his love is better than wine you know i keep telling people i don't know how many people able to understand this that you know his love is very intoxicate his love is very intoxicating as you started to enjoy his love you will be addicted to god you will be you know fully committed to god not only that you will be addicted to god and committed to god as you started to enjoy him as you filled with him as god has become your desire you know what you are transformed the person you will be transformed you will be totally a different kind of person so being filled being filled with god being filled with the spirit now how to be filled with this god how to be filled with the spirit i want to tell you one of the practical tips tips you know i can give you just keep thanking god the day we are full of gratitude we are full of god the day we are full of gratitude full of thanksgiving the day we are abounding with thanksgiving the day we are you know praising god for his goodness we will be filled with the spirit we will be filled with the spirit hallelujah hallelujah i want to tell you god wants us to be filled with the spirit god wants us to drink his love i remember you know one day i called my uh, children and uh, i told you know keith i didn't come and sit in my lap so they also came and they were uh they sat on my lap and uh, we said we are going to drink the love of god so they asked uh, they started to laugh and they asked like how we are going to drink he said now just sit and let's you know close our eyes and uh, raise our hands and let's say uh, thank you lord for the love thank you lord for your love thank you lord for your love you know thank you father thank you we are drinking your love just you know we'll say this for a few minutes and you know what after a few minutes both of them they started a laugh and then i was thinking that you know they are making fun of me but after that you know i come to know that they started a laugh because they are filled with the spirit they are full of joy of the holy ghost see sometimes people don't understand that kind of crazy laugh you know christianity is all about joy christianity is all about cheerfulness christianity is all about you know laughter but you know what they think that christian life means every time crying oh god please forgive me oh god please help us oh god deliver us they think that in all ways we should be crying yeah there is a place for tears there are time we can intercede for people there are time with you know we can do a heartfelt fervent prayer where we may pray with some tears we may shed tears but i want to tell you christian life is not full of sorrow christian life is full of joy and laughter so they began to laugh we began we were filled with so much of joy of the holy ghost we started to laugh and you know what what is the interesting thing the next day they call me daddy come let's drink the love of god i said no that is not a play they said no we are not playing yesterday we enjoyed a lot we want more that's why we are asking you i, I was thinking that they were playing you know they are taking it as a fun because i am not doing those thing as a fun i am doing it as a serious it may look like a fun to you but i was doing all my heart i want to be filled with the love of god i want to drink the love of god i want to be intoxicated by the love of god 
One more time, I want to tell you, go on, listen to Heidi Baker's testimony in YouTube. She was attending one particular meeting and she was a missionary to Africa, Mozambique, I think, Mozambique, yeah. So she went there and she was trying to serve the Lord, and but she was a failure. She was disappointed. She came to a particular meeting. Uh, she went to a particular meeting just to be encouraged. And in that particular meeting, she was baptized by the love of God. Bap the word baptism means immerse. She was filled, she was immersed by the love of God. And you know what? After that, for one whole week, she was like, you know, uh, look, she was like abnormal. She was literally like, you know, the drunk, drunkard woman. They thought that, you know, something happened to her mind. Maybe she got disturbed in her mind. But the whole week, she was so much soaked in the love of God the love of the father, the embrace of the father. And after that, you know, the, her whole life was transformed. She was a blessing to the world right now. She, she raised people from the dead. You know how she raised? She is not like other man of God. In the name of Jesus, I be raised from the dead. No. She take the people and just hug them. You know, I heard a story about uh, some child died and she take the child and embrace the child and uh, started to, you know, just love the child back to life. So just loved, you know, filled with the love and compassion, you know. I think that Heidi Baker is like another Mother Teresa. Her whole life was transformed by the love of God. So once again, I want to tell you the, another story about a man called Leif Hitland. He was a pastor, Baptist church pastor in Norway. He was having very few people. He was, he was having a goal just to get 500 people. So in this place, you know, reaching 500 people was like a big achievement. So he also went to one day for Randy Clark's meeting. And there he was baptized by the love of God. He was filled with the love of God. He was filled with the spirit. And he fall down in the floor and started to cry like a baby. And while he was crying there, God was healing his heart. God was healing every wounds, every pains, every hurts in his heart. And while he was in on the floor crying and experiencing the love of God, crying like a child, Randy Clark prophesied to him, it seems. You're going to reach millions of Muslims. You're going to reach millions of Muslims. And he was thinking, I'm not even able to reach 500 people in Norway. And I'm going to, how I'm going to reach Muslims. But you know what? Many years before, like, like two, three years before I was watching his uh, one of his messages, he said, you know, right now we have finished giving baptism for 10 lakhs Muslims. So he's already reached, you know, 1 million. He is a very important person in, you know, Pakistan. He's preaching. People love him there. They, they named him as an ambassador of love. They named Lee Fitland as an ambassador of love. He was able to reach Muslims, touch Muslims. By the love of God. So I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, we under, underestimate the power of God's love. When we desire Him, when we are filled with His love, when we know how much He loves Him, it is easy for us to love Him. The reason we are not able to love Him because we don't know till now how much He loves us. I know that I am preaching this message for so many times. I want to preach until and every believers, every brothers and sisters who listen to my message soaked in the love of God. Filled with the love of God. Intoxicated by the love of God. So today, 
the same way people are you know drunk in the wine we have to be drunk in the spirit we should be drunk drunk in the love of god wherever you are right now i want to tell you i see that holy spirit coming upon you like a cloud he's coming upon you and overshadowing you not only that he's just coming upon you is baptizing you he's filling you right now you know this i want to tell you my brothers and sister you know you don't understand the, the power of my message i may be preaching for 14 people or 15 people i want to tell you but this message the world needs this message the world is full of hatred based on religion based on color based on language in foreign country people hate you know white people and black people in india people hate the south indian people and south indian people malayalis and north indian people you know the world is full of hatred the world is full of violence killing each other beating each other in the name of religion in the name of caste in the name of color language my god but what is the solution god's unconditional love is the solution and say now i want to tell you people think that you know if you preach the love of god too much people will be spoiled but i want to tell you no by by hearing the love of god the message about the love of god too much you will not be spoiled you will be transformed love never fails so i right now i want you to be once again be filled with the love of god hello god to heal your heart from any kind of bitterness hello god to heal your heart from all kinds of hurt if you are broken inside if you are discouraged you are if you are broken into pieces i want to tell you the love of god can make your heart whole right now the love of god can heal your heal your heart right now be filled with the love of god i want to tell you you know if you are filled with the love of god you will love, you will you will love god more and more love is very important he first loved us before you choose to love him he first loved us that is the message that is the gospel so if you only understand he first loved us you know you will be delivered from all kinds of other things bible tells us love not the world nor things of the world all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh and lust of the eyes and the pride of life but people love the world why people are loving the world because they have no idea how much god loves them bible clearly tells us love not the world nor things of the world all that is in this world is the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life and all these things one day will pass away so i want to tell you my brothers and sisters be filled with the love of god his love is better than wine his love can intoxicate us his love can transform us derrick prince wrote a book many years before the transforming power of god's love my god i pray that you know you will understand the transforming power of god's love god's love only can transform the goodness of god can lead us with repentance i'll be keep keep on preaching how much god loves you i'll be keep on preaching about god's goodness and you know what that message will slowly bring change and transformation you have no idea until this time how much you are transformed you are getting transformed every day thank you father thank you lord thank you holy spirit lord wherever people are listening to your to this message right now lord let them be let them feel your presence let them be touched with your love let them receive your love let there be healing into their heart if you are feeling lonely if you are feeling alone god is healing your heart right now he is healing you from all kinds of loneliness if you are frustrated if you are not satisfied if you are discouraged in his life the love of god is refreshing you right now the love of god is refreshing your life right now you will be satisfied with his love you will be enjoying his love something amazing is happening in your life there are a lot of new beginnings happening in your life right now there are a lot of new beginnings i'm telling you i speak new beginnings i want to tell you something amazing is going to begin in your life your life is not at over something beautiful something amazing is going to begin in your life 
I speak new beginnings in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak new beginnings. I speak new, wonderful, happy beginnings in the name of Jesus. I don't know what you have gone through in the past. I don't know how far you have been happy in the past. But right now, I want to tell you, you will be the happiest person. You will be the joy, joyful person in the mighty name of Jesus. You're going to be full of joy. You're going to be fully satisfied in the name of Jesus. I want to tell you, just seek his presence. I want to tell you, seek him. Seek him. Just focus your heart on him. Just enjoy. Just enjoy.